Mr. Dominant, Present. Johnson, Present. Williams, Lynn, Bowman, Baker, Lynch, Escadet, Thibodeau, Cox, Present. Smith, Present. Epperson. Present. We have a quorum, Mr. President. All right. Uh, Mr. Uh, Wilson is going to do the implication, and Mr. Williams, the uh, pledge. As we go in prayer, please be mindful that uh, Ms. Baker's situation, Commissioner Baker, who uh, daughter's going home to be with the Lord Friday night. We want to keep her lifted up in her family. So uh, if you will join me, please just go and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this great opportunity to come here today. We thank you, Lord God, for your mercy and your grace that's been renewed for us this day. We know, Father God, that we have not lived our lives in so, so a manner that, that, that we deserve to be here, but we thank you, Lord God, for your grace and your mercy. Father God, we pray at this time for Commissioner Baker and her entire family and her friends who uh, have experienced a tremendous loss by the home going of uh, Ms. Erica Robinson, her daughter. We pray for the family, Lord God, that you will lift them up. Help them, Lord God, get beyond where they are. Fill the void of their heart that's been created by the home going of their loved one. We pray, Father God, as we uh, put our arms in, uh, around her and support that she will feel the love that, that's coming from us to her, Lord God, that would enable her to go through this, Lord God, that we all dread uh, going through ourselves. We pray, Father God, for all uh, members of our parish government. We pray for our military members throughout the world who are defending our liberty and justice. We pray, Father God, uh, for this commission body and for the leadership, that you could continue to give us the courage, Lord God, and the desire to please you and to serve the great people of our parish. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. That's Reverend Wilson. Now give a new name. Hurry and face the flag. Repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Reverend Wilson, we'll give you a new name. Okay, any agenda additions? Oh, yes, yes. please. Uh, my computer screen's not on. You get that. Raise your hand if you want to. Uh, at this time, I'd like to make an um, addition to the agenda to allow a guest for Thursday. So one second. All right. Uh, to uh, the purpose. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, last meeting we had a guest uh, that told us about some uh, novelty items that were being sold in cattle fairs. Uh, our guest will be the uh, drug enforcement agent uh, from cattle fairs, and he is going. We're going to have a display up here to let y'all understand what we're dealing with. And uh, from my understanding, they already have a resolution working on, or an ordinance working on, so we'll be able to look at it, see what we're dealing with, and it's basically a show and tell. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Please vote. Comments. Citizens who wish to address the commission must fill out a comment card and file it to the president of our clerk of the commission. Comments by any citizen will be limited to three minutes. Do you have any, any no. cards? Have none. No. 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 Any report? Uh, yes, sir. Commissioner uh, Thibodeau, uh, commissioners, we have one report today. We have a special guest, Ms. Patricia Spitzley from the Race of Trust. And she is here to give us an update on the general most property that is in our parish and its disposition. She's been here several times, and this is the third or fourth time you're back, Tristan. Welcome back. Good afternoon, Mr. Administrator and members of the Commission. Thanks for the opportunity to address you today. My name is Patricia Spitzley. I'm the Deputy Redevelopment Manager for the Racer Trust. I just wanted to come and, and give you an update on what's going on um, out at the, at the facility. I didn't know if um, you commissioners um, had a general idea of who Racer Trust was, and so I also wanted to take this opportunity to introduce the trust to the commission. Um, the trust was born almost a year ago, will be a year, March 31st. 
of last year um, as a, a product of the bankruptcy of General Motors. Um, when General Motors went bankrupt, um, they, um, in bankruptcy court, they left 89 properties in 14 states. And as a result of those properties being you know, left in the bankruptcy court, um, several trusts were formed, but the one uh, that I'm uh, involved in is a $770 million environmental trust. And the purpose of that trust is twofold, and it's to uh, clean up properties that have environmental issues and also to redevelop those properties. So there's uh, $500 million out of that $770 million that is uh, dedicated to environmental cleanup. There are three quarters of our properties have their own distinct environmental budget. The property here in, um, in Cattle Parish does not have an environmental budget. One of the reasons is, is it's still in operation and GM is still there and so we're still, you know, they still have responsibility for what's going on there and they're still, we're still working through those things. So there's not an environmental budget there, but three quarters of our property do have an environmental budget. Um, and then the other part of the uh, $270 million roughly is for administrative costs, holding costs for the properties. Um, the facilities like the one um, out um, on General Motors Boulevard, we pay property taxes, we pay to keep it heated, we pay for security. <coughs> so all of those things go and, and are for that um, $270, $270 million, which makes up the $770 million pot. So, you know, part of our part of our mission um, and the mission I'm involved in as Deputy Redevelopment Manager is working with the local um, units of government and we've been working with Mr. Epperson um, and we've been working with Administrator Wilson and Mr. Lucky to um, figure out what exactly um, the community wants at the facility. I mean, it, it, it kind of sounds like a no-brainer. We want, we want good jobs. We want, you know, industrial jobs if we can. But that's our first step. That's the racer's first step is to work with the community to get their economic <coughs> development vision. And then based on that, we put together a draft marketing plan. We have the community look at it and we have sent it to the administrator's office and we've shared it with Mr. Epperson. And that marketing plan is now on our web page. And we have been actively marketing the property. Um, we've brought a number of folks to visit the property. We've had a number of people um, interested in the property. Um, you know, Last year, you know, we would we would say that you know the economy, as it is, it, it is, um, you know, we didn't have a lot of folks that were visiting or maybe even interested in the property. Um, I think last year in nine months we had maybe 130 um, inquiries and we had nine nine site visits on 64 pieces of property. But as of today. We've had 170 inquiries, and we've we've, we've shown 15 we've had 15 site visits, um, not just at this property, but at you know racer properties as a whole. But what that says to us is a couple things. It says that the economy we think is turning around. We think that um, people are looking to you know come out and looking at industrial properties. The other thing is with um, GM posting you know, a, a very large gain, I guess, and, and when we went to the Canadian Auto Show, the discussion there saying that there's going to be a 6% increase in, in car sales, we know that a lot of the suppliers are looking to um, take advantage of those projections, and so they're looking to expand. And so it's a really, it's a really good time for holders of industrial property, which is the Racer Trust. We, we've seen a, a great interest. We are very, very hopeful um, for um, the property on General Motors Boulevard. We've had a number of folks express interest um, and, and um, how um, my uh, counterpart, um, Bruce Rasher, looks at it is, you know, you can put the interest in, in three categories, your schemers, dreamers, and the, and the real deal. But we've had a very um, high number of real deal folks who are looking to come in. Um, we've been working with um, you know, the, 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 the parish administrator, we've been working with the state of Louisiana, and so we're, we're very hopeful um, and very optimistic that, that we can get somebody into that facility. So I just wanted to just give you a brief update. Um, I don't want to take too much of your time, um, but also allow um, for a question and answers about RACER or about our efforts to, to uh, market the facility. Um, thank you again for your time. And if you have any questions, I'd be more than willing to field them per you know, your, um, your instructions. All right. Uh, Mr. Lynn, 
The plant, before the restructuring of General Motors and the other manufacturers for automobiles in the United States, was that plant updated to be one of the most green plants in North America? I know that it's only 40 years old. I can't speak to whether it was updated to be one of the most green plants. I know that it's a really nice looking, very modern facility, which makes it a lot more attractive for folks who are looking to come in and use it for an industrial type activity. Do you know the level of efficiency as far as green, as far as the machinery inside the building, as far as how new it is? I just know that the facility itself is about 40 years old. I can't speak to the exact age of the presses and the stamping machinery that's there. I know it's fairly new. Are you marketing the property both with and without the contents? As a rule, Racer doesn't sell the building and the equipment inside. We usually do that separate. We usually have separate auctions for equipment. Having said that, I could see a scenario where if someone wants to come in and they need the equipment that's already there, and we would entertain that. But as a rule, we don't sell both the building and the equipment in one transaction. Do you know if General Motors has entertained the idea of moving back into the building, considering that the market trend is going up in their profitability? I have no knowledge of that. I know that they have told us that they plan on vacating the building. Do you know of any new plants that General Motors is building, like St. Louis? I have no knowledge of General Motors activities. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Epperson. Mr. Chairman, if you would, I received a couple of inquiries and some communications that may not have been factual, but that may have been premature. So if we would, any leads that we get, and I thank Mr. Wilson and Mr. Luckett and myself, we are aware of any leads or any inquiries that we get, we should direct them to raise a trust. And so if you would, would you do on your letterhead to all of our partners and make that fact be known, because there were some misconceptions coming up. And a lot of times, a lot of this information, these negotiations are basically private, because we might be competing with each other. And so let's take it to raise a trust, and we'll let them decide who's to be included. They aren't going to forget us. So that was almost a big problem here last week. Yeah, it was. And Commissioner, I really appreciate you saying that. We do keep discussions with potential end users confidential. You know, there are a number of reasons for that. You know, as you're negotiating final price, or you're negotiating, you know, incentives that, you know, that may help a company or an end user come here. One of the other things is that, you know, per the settlement agreement by which the Raise a Trust was formed, we're guided by six criteria that we use to evaluate a potential end user. And so, you know, and those are, of course, price, you know, whether or not that end user is going to bring jobs, whether or not that end user is going to have a positive impact, you know, tax-wise, economic-wise to the community, whether or not that end user is going to increase our environmental costs or prevent us from fulfilling our environmental responsibilities. On our sites that have their own distinct environmental budget, one of the things that make those sites more marketable than any other industrial site is that Raise a Trust retains the environmental responsibility for cleaning up those sites as it was set forth in the settlement agreement. So, you know, if we sold a piece of property tomorrow, for instance, in Flint or in Michigan, we own 55 properties in Michigan, and, you know, it was set forth in the settlement agreement that these are the environmental activities that we have to do and this is the environmental budget, we still would fulfill that responsibility. And so a new user would not have to come in and worry about 
um, those environmental costs. And we, we think that that, again, makes our racer sites very attractive to folk who want to come back in and come into you know, an urban area and take advantage of the existing infrastructure. And so what we also look at are the needs of the community and the desires of the community. And again, we've worked with them to develop the marketing brochure and we're marketing it. Um, we also look at whether or not that um, end user is going to do what they say they do. We, uh, you know, if they have another operation somewhere, we go visit that operation. We open up their business plan. We, we look very closely at their books. We also look at the reputation of that end user. We look at criminal history. We look at anything and everything so that we can confidence, confidently come back to the community as confident as you can and say, you know, we took this end user through their paces and, and we, we believe that they're going to do what they say they're going to do. And so, you know, those are the criteria that we go by um, and that we use to um, vet an end user. So, and, and you know, we, we enter into confidentiality agreements with these end users so that we can have access to their books, so that we can have access to, you know, um, you know, their work process, you know, just whatever it needs and whatever it takes for us to review that process. So that's why it really needs to be confidential. Mr. Williams. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to uh, publicly thank Commissioner Epperson and the staff and the young ladies here, especially Commissioner Epperson, for taking the taking the lead and taking the bull by the horn uh, to let the people know that your motors and that manufacturing is not dead, it's alive and well, and, and that new technology, innovation, and creativity is still America's. And the young lady, you explained everything in detail, uh, everything that I thought was very important to the cattle uh, site. Um, you said it's out of $700 million, am I correct? $770 million trust, Seven, yes. So what, is, what are the percentage here for cattle? Is there a percentage? Well, you know, the bulk of it, $500 million of it, as I explained, was for is for environmental cleanup. And the uh, General Motors site um, at, in, in the parish does not have its own dedicated environmental budget. The other half, $270 million, we use for redevelopment activities. We use for carrying costs and carrying costs. So, you know, you, you won't go out, you know, when GM leaves, you won't go out to that facility and see it in disrepair. You know, we'll be taking care of the, the mowing the lawns. We'll have security force there. We'll still be paying the utilities. We'll still be paying the property taxes. Um, so that's what that's what that money is for. And so I can't give you a percentage of what that is for that site. Excuse me, but you know, significant funds are going to be expended out there to make sure that it doesn't go into disrepair. We, we, we plan on selling that fairly soon, so we like it to stay clean and, and, look, and look good so that, you know, a potential end user comes out and, and sees that it's in, it's in ready-to-go condition. Again, again, thank you for being a stakeholder here in Cattle Pack. We thank you. And I, and I appreciate that. I mean, as, we've, as I've talked to the administrator's office and as we've talked to Commissioner Epperson, it is important for RACER to be a partner. And it is important for us to, be, to partner with you to, to vet end users and, and, to, and to market the facility. And so, um, you know, I'll come back as often as I can, as much as I can. Um, I think you'll see my, my counterpart, Bruce Rasher, the cleanup managers here. Um, we do want to be good neighbors in the community. Mr. Johnson, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just a couple of questions. Uh, what are some of the outlets you're using for the advertising? I, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. What are some of the outlets that you're using for advertising? We use um, the, we use uh, uh, industrial uh, property clearing houses. We we go to trade shows. Um, we we work with um, my counterpart Bruce Rasher. He was um, vice president of one of the largest property management companies in the world, and so he uses his connections and. Um, um, and to, to market the property. And so, you know, we were just at the Canadian All Show. Uh, Bruce and I were there last month. Um, and, and this was one of the properties that we showcased up in, in Canada when we were there. And so we, 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 will use, we use all the tools that are out there to, to market the property. Okay. Um, is the property also being marketed internationally as well? Absolutely. Again, we were, we were just in Canada. We've had inquiries from Germany. We've had inquiries... Um, um, in, in uh, out east um, in China, um, and so we are marketing it internationally. We have an international brochure. Um, we work, we're working very closely with uh, the U.S. consulate in Canada. We're also working very closely with the Department of Commerce 
um, Select USA, um, and, and those folks to help us to market the properties internationally. Okay, and then the last question. I think we saw a, a draft copy of the brochure. Since you have a final copy, could we get one of those? We, we can absolutely get you one. Um, it's on our web page, but I'd be more than happy to. It's on our website, too. Okay. okay. All right. So it looks, it looks really good. I was just looking at it this morning. It looks good. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much for the information and the update. Thank you. And if there are any questions you need to get a hold of me, um, you know, the administrator's okay. office knows where I am. Right. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Under the Communicative Committee reports, I have a Charter Review Committee, Commissioner Lynch. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I think you we got some information from you earlier this week. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, as we move forward with eventually selecting those members, that um, it's my hope that they are reflective of uh, a representative of this governing body and parish uh, in addition to whatever other criteria we're considering. All right. For those of who may not have gotten the email, I'll send to everybody ask you to please make some recommendations and give a short resume on someone that you may want to choose to uh, be a candidate for the Charter Review Committee and have it in to me by April 2nd. You can just turn it in to Todd and uh, then we'll, from that list, hopefully we'll get enough people and enough uh, diverse people that we can, uh, we can go before the commission and we'll make it. Commissioner will make the choice. There are certain numbers? Be six members. Six members. Uh, Mr. Lynch, do you have a Justice Committee report? Yes, I know that we have uh, a hearing this afternoon, so I'm going to uh, just hit the high points here and not give my normal long uh, speech <laughs> oh, yeah. that John loves so much. Uh, <laughs> uh, there was quite a bit of discussion and deliberation, uh, but these are our next steps. Uh, moving forward, one, the Cato JDAI will be reassessed on April 4th and 5th to determine how well we are progressing, and a written report will be provided to the committee, uh, the commission, and administration. Uh, and from that, uh, pol policy recommendations should be developed and implemented to support the mission and purpose of detention and the JDAI initiative. Within the next 30 days, probation uh, will manually gather and input data from 2011 and to date in 2012 to provide the committee with a clean list of alternatives to detention <coughs> used by the court in probation. Uh, that data will be analyzed and interpreted to guide next steps. Third, uh, the Director of Juvenile Services will provide the committee with an update on needed software upgrades with a timeline and alternately an alternative recommendation to our existing system, both with detail associated costs, whether that's an upgrade or a new system. The Director of Finance will provide the committee information relative to the value of office space, including utilities, supplies, equipment, et cetera, provided to VYJ. The Director of Juvenile Services will provide the committee with empirical data in a more manageable format uh, than was presented at our meeting. The Director of Finance will provide the committee with financial analysis and, and impact of maintaining the existing millage rate. Uh, in other words, not rolling back the millage for uh, juvenile justice or criminal justice. What exactly is it? Is it criminal justice? Juvenile justice? Juvenile justice. Juvenile justice. Juvenile justice. Uh, the Director of Juvenile Service of Finance will provide the committee uh, with a spreadsheet of state funded programs and personnel in anticipation of them giving, in anticipation of them being impacted by the proposed $24 million budget cut the governor has recommended for the Office of Juvenile Justice. Um, the, uh, lastly, the committee voted two to one in favor of supporting funding of 35000 for the juvenile court program through June 30th. Uh, we're going to have a follow-up meeting hopefully within the next 30 days and the additional uh, information I'll provide in the written report to the commission. Thank All right. you. And then they go legislative comment. All right. Yes. Any other communication from any other commissioners? <clears throat> All right. President's report will remind you we have group pictures this Thursday at 315. Everybody clean up good. <laughs>
That means we wear a Sunday clothes. <clears throat> if you got them, well, <laughs> I'll just leave it at clean up good. Um, and for those that may not know, for Miss Baker, the visitation for her daughter will be uh, at the Mount Olive Baptist Church at 4 o'clock on Wednesday. Uh, services will be at 5 o'clock. And I believe the uh, actual burial will be Thursday at 9, is it 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock? Thursday morning. But uh, this station is 4 o'clock on Wednesday. That's correct, sir. That's correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. You all business? No, sir, there is none. All right. New business. All right. Authorize the introduction of ordinance number 5189 2012, an ordinance to accept a portion of Shree Park Lane in section 30, Township 17, range 14, and is not presently within the boundaries of the city of Shreveport in the parish of Caddo System. So moved. Second. Moved by Second. Yes. Bowman on this one. I was going to miss it. Okay. <laughs> Second, I was going to miss it. Yes, both of us. Yeah. Let's see what we got here. Okay. Passes. All right. <clears throat> Next, I have authorized the introduction of ordinance number 5190 of 2012, declaring certain adjudicated properties to be surplus and authorized the parish administrator designee to sell the parish's tax interest for the year 2012. Second. Okay. Uh, motion to move to Thursday by. Ms. Lynch, second by Mr. Williams, and I think there were motion by Mr. Dominic. Make a motion that the items three through eight on the new business be moved to Thursday. Second. Second. All right, we've got a first uh, motion, Mr. Dominic, second by Mr. Williams, to enjoy the remaining um, new business. Cast your vote, please. <coughs> Next, I have authorized a resolution of recognition of Mr. Gary Candy and Red Ball Oxygen Company. So move it, sir. Voted by Mr. Second. Williams, second by Ms. Lynch. Pass your vote, please. Passes. Next, we have authorized a resolution of recognition to reach for the STARS mentoring program. So we'll move it, Chair. Move Mr. Williams. Second. Second by Mr. Dominic. Pass your vote, please. That passes. Authorized special resolution proclaiming March as National Women's History Month. Move for Thursday. Move Mr. Second. Everson. Second by Mr. Williams. Cash your vote, please. Passes. Authorized commissioners to travel to attend forthcoming NOPCO Economic Development Conference to be held in Atlanta, Georgia, April 18th through 22nd. Second. Motion by Ms. Lynch. Second by Mr. Williams. Ms. Lynch, do you have any anything to say? No, uh, I, everyone should have a copy of the um, registration and information on what's involved. Um, All right. Mr. Williams, do you have anything? I was up a week to Thursday. We got it. All right, Mr. Cox, who's all wanting to go to this thing? I mean, I haven't taken a poll or anything. I'm well, it's on this. I was expecting yeah, you to know something. Uh, I don't really know. Before Thursday, <laughs> I'd like to know. I'll pass it through to Thursday, but come Thursday, I'd like to know who's going to go. All right, Mr. Lynn. Um, every time I've been trying to become a member of the National Association of Black County Officials, they never send me back any information. Um, and I've yet to become a member, I don't think. 
Um, unless uh, it's all by mental telepathy that people are members. Um, <laughs> and I'd like, I might like to go. You ain't selling a check. <laughs> Do they take your money? The parish pays. I think, I think that hey. Caddo Parish pays for everybody's membership. That's correct. McLean, I, McLean, I believe you are. Uh, I would, you I would are still a like to become a member. We sent your you name. You're a member. You are a member. If you send the okay. check in for me, do they not send any of the members any information? Because I've never received anything. I'm not. May I answer that? Here, maybe Mr. Epperson. Okay, I, I carried the the check, and uh, let's see, you won at the conference uh, this year, so I got some stuff for you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's all, Mr. President. And I, I, I bragged on you. I told you we were 100% plus one other. All right, cast your votes, please. Passes. Okay. Set agenda. Okay, adjourn. Thank you, adjourn. Okay, we. Uh,